Tough to do. When you've got all the players out there that look like they're all 6'6", and they all weigh 210, and they all run like deer, awfully hard to stop that kind. Kendall Gill trying to penetrate, kicks it back off. It's a very smart player. Hamilton trying to show his range. You know what he said? I've had enough of it in the paint. Let me show you what I can do on the baseline. You don't get triple teamed out there. 60-44, here's the steal. Four on two, Gill in the middle. Hamilton. That's the way you fill the lane on the break. This might get ugly. Armstrong. Tip won't go. Halfway down, came back out. Here they come again. Gill. Anderson couldn't get it to go. Hamilton. Here's Armstrong. Marble. What a move. Oh, jeez. Oh, what a great move. Ahead of the pack is Hamilton. Showtime. 64-46. Mike, you just cannot go to sleep on this Illinois team. If you get a basket, you better get back in transition and defense quickly. I think one thing they're trying to do, Larry, pounded inside so hard, nobody went back. And he's got a foul away from the ball. Bardo called for the person. 15-16 to go in the ball game. Illinois continuing to increase its lead. They're up by 18. Talk about the extra added dimension that Kendall Gill gives this Illinois club. Here's one of them right here. Reaches in, steals the ball. Now watch him go to the other end to deliver the ball to Lowell Hamilton. Kisses it right off the glass. Kendall Gill with an excellent play. And Hamilton filling the lane. But how about the other end? Let's talk about good guards. Here's a good one. Watch Armstrong. Little Adrian Dantley move right there. About three and a half steps, but count it anyway. Here's what Marble has done tonight. 20 points, three rebounds. Paul Hamilton enjoying a breather on the bench. 13 and three, most of them from inside. And one of the Illinois seniors playing his final home game. Oh, great move by Moses. Oh, what a block by Battle. Moses had it stuffed. Marble with the foul. Can't get it. And Illinois will come out with another rebound to Anderson. It was Anderson that got that block in there. Yeah. Smith is now in there. Number 23 to run the clock. My guy is another strength that Illinois has as Gill just misses from the outside. Anderson right back on it. Anderson gets the follow and he's fouled. Nick Anderson with 22 points tonight. Anderson, one of the better rebounders for his size of anybody in the country. 6-5. Watch him turn and get in there on Moses. Good, strong power move. Now that is completing the play. You get fouled, you go to the line. I was talking about the strength this Illinois club has. How about reaching down and getting Urban Small, Larry Smith, and Marcus Liberty yeah. on your bench? This is a foul away from the ball. It's going to be small for holding. On the press. Anderson now 23 points, 10 rebounds on the night. Non-shooting foul. Iowa will inbound. They are down by 21. You'd seen the way Iowa played early in the ballgame. You couldn't believe they'd be down 21 points. Illinois extending that defense now. They're coming out real tough man-to-man. -to -man. On a drive, and he and Small going after each other. Small's got a lot of courage. He better pick another opponent, though. Watch it down inside. Small guarding Horton right here. Oh, block. oh. Turner just hit him on the head. Well, that's why Horton swung back. Unintentional on Small's part, of course. Now Lowell Hamilton's got him. He said, what am I doing here? Now Horton gets the ball, turns to the bucket. Offensive rebound, Moses, and he's flattened by Anderson. Did a good officiating job tonight. They don't want to let this one get away from him. Getting a little rough and rugged out there underneath.
Kenny Battle will check back into the game, and Liberty will come out. Moses with his first trip to the free throw line. Larry, when you talk about Illinois, the one thing they obviously lack is the 6'10", uh, 6'11", center, but they seem to play around that deficiency very well. Well, you can compensate for size if you've got a lot of quickness and athletic ability, and that's the one thing this club does have. When I talk about them going down to eight players on the bench, and they are all they all look like they're six six to six seven, and about two ten, but they all run well, they all shoot well, and they all rebound and jump well. They reminiscent of the Cardinal teams that Denny Crum has had in the past, and he's done pretty well in the eighties. Baseline shot by Anderson, the lead back to twenty one. Marble being held inside and. I'm gonna tell you, they're clean this baby up real yeah. quick. They're not going to let it get out of hand. Good job of officiating. I agree. Marble and Smith going at it a little bit here. Smith's going to get the going to get the foul and Marble's going to walk to the line and shoot the free throws. Marble upset on the last sequence. Uh, he was hit in the place you don't want to be hit and <laughs> was not too happy about it and was asking for a foul on that sequence and finally got it on this one. Got it in the shoulder, man. <laughs> yeah. I knew as the analyst you'd come up with that. Battle. Oh, what a move. What a great pass. They are putting on a show. 71-49. This is Moses. Bullard, who can shoot the outside shot. Marble, three steps. Iowa looks a little flustered, and why not? Illinois is really doing everything right. You know what's the most amazing thing so far in the second half? We've got 13.51 still to play. Yeah. <laughs> Iowa has never lost three straight games under Tom Davis. This could be it. Armstrong. Good steal. Good pressure by Iowa. I think this is what they've got to do to get back in this basketball game. They've got to get some turnovers against this Illinois offense. 71-51. Bad pass here, but Anderson runs it down. He's fouled. Moses got him from behind, and a good foul by Moses saved the sure layup. Anderson with a good athletic move to run that ball down. I thought the ball was going to roll right into the hands of Ed Horton. He backed off. Anderson caught it up. This is the consensus all Big Ten team. Coaches and writers pick the same five guys, Anderson and Horton, Rice, Edwards, and Burson. And Jay Burson, uh, of course, Horton is from uh, Illinois, not Iowa, or Iowa, not Illinois, as we had it up on the screen. You have to feel for Jay Burson with that halo. You have to feel for Ohio State, the way they have faltered down the stretch without their leader. I, I'm going to say this in a very complimentary way, but he might be the most unusual college player I have seen in the last 10 years. I think so, too. I've never seen a guy that size who can score the way he does. If they'd let him, I think he'd play with a halo. Armstrong, good nice runner in the lane. 73-53. Battle back the other way. The basket will not count. Mike, that's what I'm talking about. You've got to get back on defense against this Illinois club. If you don't, they're going to destroy it. Battle on the run out. Who's guarding B.J. Armstrong. Look at this push behind the back. There's the shove right there. Hand checking right at the mid, right at the free throw line. Foul before the shot. So they just inbound. Kendall Gill had it stuck. And he and Jepson collide. The foul will be on Kendall Gill. When Jepson falls down, it's a long way to the floor. And it takes a long time for him to get yeah. there. Kendall Gill trying to get possession right here on the inside. He got it against Armstrong. Jepson with a good block, and then Gill went right over his back. You know, sometimes that's just called a foul of frustration. You've missed an easy shot and you want the ball back just because yeah. you feel like, gosh, I've missed that one. I want to try it again. Jepson has hit one out of two from the free throw line tonight. Way short on that one. Great offensive rebound. Horton, it's blocked. What a foul. Lane and Lina racking up some fouls in this second. Yeah. 
think they're taking their nickname literally. <laughs> that will be three on Anderson. And Lou Henson will go to his bench. We got Larry Smith back in the ballgame when he can. And Kendall Gill will come out. I, these Illinois fans really appreciate the contribution of Kendall Gill. They saw their team stumble some when he went out. Horton has not been much of a factor since the opening two or three minutes of this ballgame. Yeah, they really have taken him out of it. I think yeah. it's probably because they take a look at the Illinois bench right there. I think it's simply because the game changed on him a little bit. They started concentrating on him defensively, and he wasn't able to get the ball as often as he did in that first five minutes. Made the second free throw. He has 11. We have 13-15 to go from Illinois, and the Illini holding a 19-point lead. Mike Patrick and Larry Conley with you. Glad you could join us tonight on ESPN. Illinois trying to make it 17-0 at home. Battle Lombardo against the pressure. This is Smith. Hamilton, he can hit from there. Mike, is there something they can't do well? Haven't seen it yet. Nice drive by Thompson. Couldn't hit the shot. Liberty. Smith. Nice dip. But ESP, Hamilton has 17. The lead has grown to 23. Horton, Horton couldn't get it. Here comes Smith. And Ed Horton really frustrated. Leaves Bardo alone, and he carries the three. 80 to 54. Are you kidding? not playing chopped liver. They are playing the number 15 team in the country that has three superstars and they are eating them up for lunch. An awesome display. Great talent on this club. They've got depth. They've got quickness. They're smart. They play very intelligently. They know what to take advantage of whatever the defense gives them. This is a good, good basketball team. Battle. I think you and I agree, Larry. When they're healthy, this may be the best team in the country. Look at Horton, down the middle. Good roll. Horton trying to take everything on his own, lost the ball out of bounds. 11.41 to go. Illinois already with 82 points. They're up by 26. As good as Illinois has been in the last couple of years, they have had their problems in the NCAA. That was a last second miss, and Austin P upset them two years ago in the opening round. Then last year, Lou Henson watched in disbelief as Villanova came from 10 down in the last minute to knock Illinois out of the tournament in the second round. And of course, Larry, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth regardless of how great your regular season has been when you don't get farther than that in the tournament. Mike, I've seen Lou Henson's basketball teams play for a lot of years at Illinois and also when he was at Hardin Simmons. I'm going to tell you something. This is the best basketball team he's ever had. Yep. I think it's the deepest and the most talented. Small will be called for a personal underneath on the reach in as they inbound the ball. As a college coach once told me, though, when you get to the NCAA, you've got to have a few four leaf clovers in your pocket, you too. It does help. And it's tougher every year. He's had crabgrass for two years. Grab grass. I like it. <laughs> Marvel at the line. He's a wonderful player. Six out of seven free throws tonight, 22 points. He's played very well. His last six games, he's averaged 22 points a game. Well above his average of 19. I think this guy's going to be a really good NBA player. I think so, too. Good two guard, small guard. He play almost, he can play three positions, bro. Really. And he plays very, very hard. And bound to Liberty. It's a two-on-one situation. Look at Garner get back in a hurry. And Liberty buries the jumper. That's why it's hard to press Illinois. They beat that press with a long pass. Then you got two-on-one, three-on-two, and they're so athletic, they're going to find a way to get the ball in the basket. 84-58. The seniors are going out in style. Bullard. Look at the field goal percentage in the second half. 
Illinois shooting 72%. Not all of those have been layups. Garner in maybe where he shouldn't have been. Here comes Liberty. tried to draw the charge. What a run by Kenny Battle. Marcus Liberty with the ball. I'll just let you watch it. This defies description. Oh, oh. my. I love it. Oh, he yeah. Battle only has a dozen. He should get four for that one. And he gets a great hand as he comes out with 10.52 to go. The lead has grown to 28 points. You think he got over the bench and Lou Henson said, now why did you commit that foul? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Coaches are never satisfied. Small comes out of the ball game. Hamilton returns. trying to get his name in the scorebook. Mr. Badley and Pardo with the rebound. Well, everything going badly now. Going sour for the Hawkeyes. Hamilton, he likes that spot, missed that one. Horton. Oh, good play by Horton. Good nice speed good. to Marble. How about the ball handling? One end to the other end. Beating the press, they get a four on three. Anderson! No! We'll see that one coming. Dick Anderson said, Battle, you think you can do it? I can do it. That's right. Dick Anderson right down the middle, trying to give a Kenny Battle dunk here, and he got up in the air. I can tell you that. Looked like a good call, too. Contact occurred before he let it go. Yeah. It was a good call. Armstrong, he's fouled before. He got to the baseline. Hamilton will pick up the personal. Boy, the Illinois fans are a little greedy. They're up by 26 with 10 19 to go, and they're protesting every call that goes Iowa's way. Well, you know, Iowa's had a lot of success against this club. Yes, they have. They've won six of their last yeah. seven, and two of the last three they've played here in Champaign, so it hasn't been very pleasant for the Fighting Illini playing the Hawkeyes the last couple of years. That's right. They may want to win this one by 45 just for past troubles. Armstrong hits the first and get another. It's good to see P.J. back playing again. He had that hamstring problem and he's got uh, a little wrap on that left leg to help. 86-61 with 10-19 to go in the game. Full court pressure. They've got to go for the turnovers. Bardo to Gill. Look at Hamilton. And Hamilton is fired. Even when they miss their shots, they've got guys in position to get the offensive rebound for the stick backs. They sure do. Our presentation of Championship Week will continue tomorrow. Championship Games at 5 o'clock, the Transamerica Athletic Conference. Then at 7.30, the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. And at 9.30 p.m., the Atlantic 10. Penn State was some surprises in there, huh? Everybody thought it would be Temple, West Virginia? No, no. So did Temple and West Virginia. Rutgers, Penn State, and Rutgers. It's an unusual setup. They play at the... Uh, Home of the highest seeded team. They the other games at the Molester and decided to move the championship game to the highest seeded team. Bardo for three, why not? 89-62. Thompson, nice dish to Horton. And he traveled. You know, Mike, as Tom Davis, a coach who is sitting there having to go through this, having to endure this, there is so little you can do. I mean, you're doing everything you can possibly do, but the way Illinois is playing is just one of those nights. Exactly. One of the rare shots in the second half that spun out for the Illini. Moses for three. Bardo with a rebound. It's a five on two. Liberty. Now here is 
a kid like most Proposition 48 players who struggled when he finally got to play, but he doesn't look like he's struggling anymore. There's a block by Gill. Marble forces it up and got it. What a shot. Tough. Two guys on him, front and back. Marble has 27. Well, we've seen some plays tonight. Tell you what, you're gonna see about half these guys in the NBA. Gill! That's another three, and it's 94-64. Marble. And he quiets the crowd with another runner. He has 29. Gill again, Alley. You nice play by Bullard to pick it off. Well, that was a good defensive play by Bullard. I was drawn right back. Great speed. He blew by Bardo, made the bucket, and picked up the foul. And he protected the ball with his body, shielded the ball, got it up, and kissed it on the glass. Excellent offensive play. The seniors on these ball clubs have gone at each other for four years. And tonight, it's Illinois' turn of 94-68. just joined us, Illinois has put on a, simply an awesome display, 94-68 over Iowa, and that means they will be one and a half games behind Indiana in the Big Ten Championship race. The Hoosiers have at least a share of the title already clinched. Illinois will have to go to Michigan Saturday. Indiana can win the title outright by beating Wisconsin tomorrow night. They will be favored to do so, or winning at Iowa on Saturday. Of course, Bob Knight doesn't want it to come down to that. He'd like to wrap it up tomorrow night against Wisconsin. I want to go back to the point that I made at the top of the show, and I really want to reinforce this. I think that if Illinois beats Michigan on Saturday, they are entitled to a number one seed. Not to knock Indiana out, maybe it will, but they've beaten the Hoosiers twice, and Illinois playing as well as anybody in the country right now. And they've got Gill back healthy and ready to play. I don't know how you can deny them a number one seed the way they're playing. It would be tough to do. 94-68 approaching the eight-minute mark in the game. Bowman is into the ball game number 10 for the first time for Illinois. He's got the ball and lost it out of bounds. P.J., a junior out of Champaign. Junior college transfer who has struggled with his shooting. Did you know he had 18 against Iowa at Iowa? It was a season high for him. He's got the talent. First team national junior college All-American. Tip won't go. Here comes the break. Bowman with the ball. Went to the middle, dishes the battle. one of those players who just seems to pop up wherever the ball is. I mean, right there, he misses the shot. He gets back immediately on defense and almost deals the ball. They have not done too much wrong tonight. I think that's about 33 minutes of the finest basketball I've seen a team play this year. Kendall Gill with the steal, and then he commits the violation on the sideline. And, Mike, you got to talk about this. They're not playing a bad club. This is no. a good basketball team that they're playing in Iowa, a club that has won 21 games and beaten some good teams this year. In fact, beat North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This is a good club. They've beaten Illinois once. So this is a club that you're going to look at. You're going to see this team in the NCAA tournament. They're going to perform well tonight. This has been all over I think the presence of Kendall Gill really made a difference. Thompson with a miss. Here comes Bowman on the run. He's got Gill on his left, holds up. Lou Henson up telling his team he wants him to run the offense. Hamilton had it slapped away on the way up. Bowman got it back. It's funny to see this kind of pace right now, the way they've been playing. Gill just off the mark. Thompson clears. Yeah, it does. Garner got caught up in the air, kicked it back out. Marble for three. Boy, Marble with 32 points. Terrific night. Terrific night. Turn over right to Liberty. Threw it right into the hands of Thompson. And Thompson gets the bucket. Marble has matched his career high. And Iowa has cut the lead to 21 points. We've got a timeout. 6.41 to go in the game. It's still all Illinois. 6.41 left in this one. A 21-point lead for Illinois. The Illini with the ball. This is Marcus Liberty. The runner won't go for him. Thompson out on the run for Iowa. Head to Marble. Look at that control. Look at that move. Roy Marble 
a career-high 34 points. His team is still down by 19. 